Hey y'all, so today we're gonna make this a quick video, but it's a question that I get at least once a week. So I go out and I speak at events on VR, AR, game design. I'm also a professor teaching game design and other curriculum, as well as someone that works professionally at Unity. So yes, maybe I have some slight bias that I'll get out of the way up front, that I do think Unity is an awesome engine, but I wanted to talk about the three, four, five engines that I typically see people talking about and explain that the very first thing that I will say is if you have come to this video looking to understand what is the best engine, you need to tell me what you're trying to do first because there is no best engine for every use case. You need to pick the engine that's right for you. And sometimes it's a decision about, I have 25 different use cases and I'm gonna have to pick one engine because I don't wanna retrain people over and over again. In that case, then you just pick whatever is going to suit most of your needs. So I have Unity's kind of flagship website video running in the background here, and you can see pretty quickly what Unity tries to do. So it's not photorealism. It's not necessarily super stylized cartoony. It's somewhere in between that it enables you to create a variety of good looking visuals different types of gameplay, FPSs, third person, over the shoulder, uh, XR experiences and headset, web. Unity's entire value proposition is that it's cross-platform. It's good for mobile, desktop, console, VR, web, etc. It has a really large asset store, an extremely large community and player base of creators as well as a pretty easy to use engine as far as learnability, because there's a lot of YouTube tutorial makers out there. They also have an entire learn website that has all free curriculum. It's all uh, to be used with C sharp. So it's relatively quick to get up and going in C sharp, as opposed to something a little bit more difficult like C or a different language. Um, and it's used a lot in different industries. So what I typically tell my students is if you're wanting to diversify your skill set and have uh, the ability to go into automotive or the ability to go into an industrial manufacturing plant and still be able to have a marketable skill set, it's not a bad engine to learn. The next one that we have is the tried and true Unreal Engine. And again, you can see very quickly from going to their website exactly what they're trying to do, which is really good looking, impactful, visually rich environments and creation tools. So Unreal Engine is extremely good at high fidelity. It is very, very good with graphics. It has Lumen and Nanite and other tools that we won't get into in this uh, video. It also has their blueprint programming system, which is a node-based kind of visual scripting system. Uh, the hardest thing about Unreal Engine is that I've found it has a pretty steep learning curve, and it also has a pretty heavy engine footprint. So if you're installing this onto something like a low-end piece of hardware, or it needs to be embedded, there's a lot that comes with that that kind of bloats out the project. The next one that we'll take a look at is Godot. And again, each of these companies are doing a really good job of visually trying to tell you what they're known for on their front page. So Godot is your indie friendly engine. It is open source. It's very quick to get up and going with their GD script, which is similar to something like a Python. It is 100% free, 100% open source with the MIT license. It's very lightweight and customizable. The only issues that you're going to run into with Godot is that it's a relatively nascent engine and that it doesn't have a massive uh, following. I know a, a few YouTubers moved over from Unity to Godot to start doing tutorials there, and hopefully those tutorials continue uh, because more competition in the space is better for everybody. So I hope that Godot continues to do better and better. But in the meantime, you have a, a small asset library, you have a small asset store, you have a small community of, of creators that you can lean on to get information. So it is seeing growth, and I think it's really cool to see what folks are doing with it. It's one of those that is going to be quick to get up and do something small and lightweight that you would like to do. But once you start getting into the more um, nuanced or the more advanced features, you may start to run into some walls that you just can't really easily fix. The next one that I would mention is Game Maker. 
This is a fantastic engine that I have taught. Uh, I 10 plus years ago, I taught high school and Game Maker was the engine that I preferred there because it's a really easy way to start getting up and going with 2D specific kind of logic based interactive environments. So what they're showing you here is a very simple game. You can see the parallaxing in the background. You're kind of driving along. And there are a lot of really quick and easy ways to get into cause and effect if then and start to learn the logic of how a game should be made. Now, with that comes limitations that you'll eventually get into if you're using Game Maker. If you want to start getting into 3D, you're going to see immediate limitations and you'll need to, to jump elsewhere. But for 2D and for learning games and game theory, I think Game Maker is an exceptional engine and I would definitely check it out. If you're wanting to build a professional game and you're wanting to lean a little bit more on a, a larger ecosystem, you're going to run out of, of runway quickly with Game Maker, but it's still worth mentioning, and I would definitely say it's a good one to learn on. Then we have a couple that are more so third-party tools. So the whole idea of this with Roblox and with Meta Horizon is that you build in their editor, and then you're going to publish out into their platform. So with Meta Horizon, you build in the Horizon editor, and then you can push out to the Meta uh, Horizon app, which can run on web, it can run on mobile, it can run in a headset, in a quest. So you can see immediately that there's uh, much more rigorous limitations on fidelity than with really anything that we've seen so far. And it's because this must run on web and on a headset, and they have to really cap how intricate you can make materials textures models etc because it also assumes a lower skill cap for a creator that you could be a teenager kind of learning how to create a world and you don't need to understand how topology works and how other pieces of the puzzle are going to function so this is a really nice way to get up and going quickly and i also do teach meta horizon as a way to get uh, into game design quickly in my vr class that i teach every semester the last one being Roblox. And this one, they don't really have a live video, but I'm sure most of you tuning into this know about Roblox and the ideas that you can get into Roblox and with their asset libraries or with your own custom model uploads, you can create a series of games that you can then monetize within their ecosystem to actually make money. So of all five or six of these engines, I tend to always go back to Unity. That's It's not a coincidence that I work at Unity. It's because I think it's an amazing tool and I love using it in my personal and my professional life. Um, so I typically find Unity to kind of be the one size fits all engine. If you, if you need to pick one engine that can do everything well, I tend to lean into Unity. Um, each of the engines really have an area that they tend to excel. Again, Unity's is multi-platform. So if you want to create something that you could push to web into a VR headset, to me, Unity is likely the choice unless you want to be limited within the Meta Horizon ecosystem and world. If you want to build a really polished, nice looking visual shooter um, where you have a, an FPS, you're running around and exploring an open world area, think like Fallout system, Unreal is probably where I would start for that because it's going to be faster to get up and going quickly. And if I wanted to build kind of a nice relaxed uh, storytelling novel type uh, experience where you're just moving through at my own pace in my own indie world, I might start to poke at Godot and understand what it offers. Ultimately, the conversation that I have with my students is this. If you want to work in AAA games and you are a ride or die, I will work at EA or Blizzard or Riot or Activision I would go Unreal, frankly. I think Unreal is the right one to learn. If you are more kind of a, a tinkerer and you like to pull things apart and understand how they work and put them back together, you would like to work in games, but you're okay to go and work in a different industry as well. That's where I would lean a lot heavier into Unity. So when my students ask me who are in a games program, that's what it comes down to is where do you want to be in five years? And let's work backwards to figure out which engine you should be prioritizing but fundamentally, learning both Unity and Unreal is a good thing. The other engines that I've mentioned are also great, but I think Unity and Unreal are the two top ones that you ought to have at least some experience with to be able to speak in the most intelligent way 
and have the best shot at a career in the field that you want. I hope that this video has been helpful. If you have any questions or you have any opinions or there's any engines that I didn't mention, please put them in the comments below. I would love to chat more about it. I hope y'all are having a great day. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see y'all in the next one.